Hi, this is Tochi with today's class on the use of bodily fluids in spiritual practice. Bodily fluids? What are you talking about? Well, this class is going to be all about that. What are bodily fluids? Why are they used in spiritual work by some spiritual or religious practitioners? What you need to know? What is very, very important to know about the use of your or other people's bodily fluids when it comes to spiritual or even religious practice. So stay with us and we will get into it in this class. I think this is very important for us to know because people are now in increasing numbers consulting spiritual practitioners they're being asked to give stuff and there needs to be a clear understanding of what you're giving, why you're giving, and how it's going to be used. So stay tuned. Welcome to my family. Hi, welcome back to today's class. And if it's, this is your first time, I welcome you. Do consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button. And if you are already a subscriber, I thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a subscriber. I also have membership in my channel. If you'd like to be a member of the Dr. Toji channel, click on the join button. If you do not see the join button or if the link to join does not work for you, then know that membership, YouTube membership is not available in your country or in your region. Sorry about that. Also, be sure to click the notification button so that you'll know when I have more material like this coming out. So what are bodily fluids? Okay, Bodily fluids are fluids that come out of any orifice in your body. In plain English, any liquid that comes out of your body, that comes out through any hole in your body, whether it's a natural hole or an artificial hole in your body. Where are the natural holes? You have your eyes, your nostrils, your mouth, your ears, your genitalia, those are the natural holes in your body. I should also include the nipples, okay? Now, the artificial holes that may occur in your body is when you have cuts, punctures, scrapes, or any other thing that breaks the integrity of your body such that fluids come out of your body, okay? Such artificial Holes or orifices can be made intentionally as through, um, for instance, through uh, surgery, or they could be made unintentionally, for instance, through accidents. So what are the bodily fluids? Bodily fluids include blood, mucus, water, plasma, semen, um, lubricants in case of women, um, what's the term for that for women? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, earwax, tears, that sort of thing. You know, mucus from your nose, your mouth, saliva. Those are different types of bodily fluids that can come out of your body. Now, why is this important to know? It is important to know because your bodily fluids carry your physical and your spiritual signature. Your signature is encoded in the DNA of your bodily fluids. Well, what about that? Okay, bodily fluids in spiritual practice are often used for covenants. Okay, they're used for agreements. So that is why, for instance, you know, back in the day when two lovers... Uh, felt that they were going to love each other forever, they would do a blood oath. They, one person might, you know, make a little incision 
in their hand and the other person uh, lick it and then the other person does an incision and then uh, the other person licks it and then they are bound because they licked each other's blood this is serious stuff i want you to understand this is serious stuff if you go into using any of your bodily fluids for any spiritual work know that this is serious let me tell you a short story when i was very young i remember um, having someone i did some work for i did some architectural uh, design work for this person okay and this person promised to pay me and one month two months three months four months they didn't pay me and that was a very young woman at that time um very young very young I was still in my early 20s and um, I would go talk to the person person say later and and this person was a much older person it was a much older man and he'll say later I'll pay you later I'll pay you later I'll pay you later I'll pay you and I, I just got tired of it so at at that age I did have a lot of older friends who were men as well who were into uh, spirituality they were into all kinds of spirituality uh, mystical work, occult work, um, religious, spiritual, spiritual, religious, you know, whatever the terms for it. I mean, these people were into stuff. Some of them were into um, secret societies and stuff like that. And I used to be like a little pet to them. You know, I'd go sit with them and learn a lot about spirituality from them. So one of them, I went to go meet him and talk to him and say, hey, you know, um, I did this architectural work for uh, this fellow and um, he hasn't paid me and I've asked him to pay me, hasn't paid me. Uh, what do you think I should do? And the guy's like, oh, um, you should come to my temple tomorrow and I'll give you a solution to deal with that. So I'm like, okay, gee, yeah, okay, great, fantastic. So the next day or so I went to his temple, which was in his home. He had a room he had set up and called a temple. So I went to that place and of course, I mean, these people weren't going to abuse me or anything like that. So I went there, I've been there before. So I went there, sat down and he did some divination and some cons consultations and whatever it was. I don't remember the details. It's been like so, so, so long ago. And um, then he got this thing that looked like an egg. It looked like a very, it was shaped like an egg. It was like more like a quail's egg, you know, really small, shaped like a chicken egg, but a lot smaller in scale, like a quail's egg. And I think it was made out of some kind of chalk. And he did some things and whatnot and what and rubbed it and prayed on it. And uh, 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 uh. okay, did what he needed to do with this clay egg. And then he handed it to me and he said, go and have intercourse sexual intercourse with this man when you're done be sure to quickly go to the bathroom and find a way to take his ejaculate his semen and smear it all over this egg while you're in the bathroom so that's assuming that i had sex with this person and he wasn't wearing protection I should do that, smear it all over the egg and save it and bring it back to him to his shrine the next day. Dear ones, okay, this is me holding this damn clay egg, okay? And I'm sitting there asking myself, did this man even understand? <laughs> <laughs> did he even understand my issue i am just trying to get payment for work that i rendered i am not having any intimate affairs with this person but apparently the spiritual practitioner thought that i was having an affair with this person okay and if I had been an unscrupulous person, I guess I would have tried to find a way to seduce this former client and start getting his bodily fluids and handed it over to this guy to do something else. But the long and short of it 
is that as I got older and learned more about spirituality, I came to understand that if I had gone ahead and done what this man had asked me to do, which was to get the semen of this non-paying cli uh, client and smear it over this clay egg and hand it over to him, he could use that to manipulate the guy. He could use that to put that guy into bondage to me or even bondage to himself. Needless to say, here's me, a kid, holding this thing going, I don't think I'm going to do, of course I didn't tell him that, but there was no way. I mean, the, I, the, I didn't have a relationship with this uh, person I did the work for. I mean, and he was so much older than me. It wasn't like he was in the same age range with me where I could go to him and say, hey, you know what, let's date each other or something. I mean, this guy was so much older than me. How, what, how, what would ever even get me into the same bed with him? So even trying to carry out that thing was very, very um, impossible. So I took the egg and I thanked him and I went home and I looked at the egg and I, you know, clay egg cracked it, looked at it. He And inside it were all kinds of things like there were some things like nails and some other foreign objects that were embedded into this clay thingamajig. And needless to say, that was the last time I ever went to hang around that older spiritual practitioner, friend or big brother or uncle or whatever one to call him. Okay. That was unethical. That was uncalled for. But I tell you the story to illustrate the dangers involved in letting your bodily fluids end up where they're not supposed to. There are people who are in covenants because their bodily fluids ended up where it was not supposed to be. There are some parts of the world where people specialize in this kind of thing. They try to get your bodily fluids and they use it for their own nefarious purposes. And then you find out that you're being manipulated against your will. You have to be careful whom you interact with and allow access to your bodily fluids. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but that's the way it is. There are some people who have such a cult knowledge that if they should lay their hands on your, your bodily fluids, it could be your semen, it could be your lubrication, it could be your the milk, you know, breast milk, it could be your sweat, it could be your earwax, the mucus, tears, blood, plasma, name it. If they lay their hands on it, they could use that to manipulate you, especially if you are not spiritually aligned, if you're not spiritually strong, if you don't have a regular and strong spiritual practice, if you're not in alignment with your spiritual crew, I am sorry, dear one, you could be a victim of this kind of nonsense. Therefore, if you're dealing with somebody and they start saying to you, um, uh, you know, hey, you know, there's this little ritual I need to do or I'd like you to participate in, um, take your clothes off. That should be a red flag. If someone is saying to you, hand over your underwear for some kind of ritual or kind of thing, that's a red flag. If someone is saying to you, oh, well, you know, I learned this thing about tantric yoga or I'm an expert in tantric yoga and you get involved with this person in tantric yoga and you're not paying attention to where your bodily fluids, like if you wipe yourself or clean, you know, clean yourself or whatever, and you're not paying attention to where all your wipes and papers and stuff are going you could end up in trouble if you're with an unscrupulous person. You need to be careful who you're sleeping with, who you're kissing, who you're consulting with, because again, there's a whole bunch of people who will use this stuff against you. They know what to do with it, how to use it, and if they want to manipulate you or control you, they can do that. Now, how is this possible? 
This is possible again because your bodily fluids contain your energetic signature. Think about it. If you were, if somebody wanted to get your DNA, they want to do DNA matching. Remember, they can take a scrape from the inside of your cheek, get your saliva, get it from any of your bodily fluids, take it to a lab and use that to do a DNA match. And that DNA match, according to current science, is 99.999% accurate. In other words, it is very unlikely that somebody else will have that same DNA construction or structure as yours, the same DNA signature as yours. You see how unique it is. It's just as unique as your thumbprint, your fingerprint. That's how unique it is. So somebody without even needing to, needing your presence or without needing, um, you know, your, your background information or all that, if they got um, a hold of your your bodily fluids and they knew what to do with it, they can do a whole bunch of nonsense that is not in your favor. Now, there are some, how do I phrase this nicely? There are some spiritual practitioners who will request your bodily fluids with your consent if you know exactly what you're doing and what you're getting into. Like for instance, they may use your bodily fluids to free you from some other things you've gotten yourself involved in or other things that you have been put into. They may have to get your bodily fluids, samples of it, little samples of it to get you out of it. Bodily fluids can be used in spiritual practice to break covenants, to break oaths and that kind of thing. There are even some spiritual practitioners who can use their own bodily fluids to do some work, especially if there's a paucity of animal sources for them to do what they need to do. For instance, if they need to do an animal sacrifice or blood sacrifice or something, they may end up using their own. I don't recommend this. They're, read my lips. I didn't say you should do this. I'm just providing information as to what's going on out there. Okay. If you're going to consult a spiritual practitioner, religious practitioner, and they're asking you to get naked and they themselves are getting naked, that should be a red flag. You will not believe how many horror stories that I get to hear, even here in the United States, people who get involved with spiritual practitioners and somehow the clothes are taken off, intimacy is involved, bodily fluids start getting exchanged, and the spiritual practitioner tells them, oh yeah, you know, I'm just being a vessel used to help you. That's bullshit. The person just had sex with you, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, they just had their way with you, okay? The, in plain English, that is just what happened. Okay, and if, again, they're very unscrupulous, they could take your bodily fluids and then start binding you to them in such that you will start desiring them and thinking about them all the time and wanting them all the time and not being able to form healthy, normal relationships with other people. You'd be focused and attached and crazy about them all the time because they got access, they lay a hold of your bodily fluids, okay? You do not want to... Um, you do not want to be put in that kind of difficult position. I usually say to somebody, if somebody is asking you for bodily fluids, asking you to take your clothes off, they themselves are taking their clothes off. Please, dear one, do not be deceived. It's a red flag. You need to be like, you know what? Smell you later and be out of there. Okay. The only time I would say, okay, maybe someone should be, if it, it, it's, it's really hard. I, I don't even know that there's a time I can even say, when, when is it? Maybe if it's a spiritual practitioner doing something, or maybe two spiritual practitioners 
who know what the heck they're doing, then okay, maybe, maybe, if they know what they're doing. Hmm. Maybe. But on the whole, I would just say no. Just just no. If people are asking you for your underwear, asking you for your intimate wear, asking you to provide a sample of your this and that that they need for their spiritual practice or, or, or whatever spiritual work that they're trying to do, even religious work. There are some religious practitioners, and no, I'm saying religious, who also are knowledgeable about these kind of things. And in order to bind you to their ministry or bind you to their religious organization or even to bind you to them so that you will find it difficult to leave, they will do these things. They will do these things. Some cults, you know, some cults do this to their members, especially their female members. You know, and again, once it starts getting into taking off your underwear, taking off your clothes, my goodness, people, that should be a red flag that something is not right. But sometimes, you know, in the in the kind of times we live now, we worship celebrities, you know, we we think so highly of religious leaders, spiritual leaders, and these people take advantage of the trust that's put in them. And then they start getting samples from their followers or from their groupies or their admirers, and they use this to bind these people to them. And then the people find it so hard to, to have natural, normal relationships with other people. Sometimes these unnatural relationships even destroy the followers, or, you know, family relationships or other relationships that they have. This is a big problem in a lot of organizations, especially secret organizations, or organizations where people have this unquestioning obedience. It's like a slavish, slavish kind of obedience to the leader. It sometimes happens in those kind of places. So I just uh, wanted to do this class today to make you aware of it. Please, please, please be aware of where your bodily fluids are going. What else can I say? What else can I say? We end our class and ask our creator, our guardian spirit, guardian angels, our spirit guides, our ancestors, the prophets and messengers and all those in the invisible realms to protect us, to warn us, to keep us from falling into these kind of spiritual traps. Sometimes we go into it knowingly, sometimes we go into it unknowingly. But however it is that we get into it, may we be given the wisdom to run away from it, to escape from it. Ashe. Ashe.